a few years ago I was working on a toy commercial, a Care Bear commercial, and they shot the they shot a live actor in front of a green screen and my job was to make it look like a Care Bear was jumping up from behind the the actor and uh and I had to make sure that my three D character, my three D Care Bear, matched with the live actor and one way I was able to go about doing that was to take the green screen footage of the actor and place it in the foreground so I thought we could take a look at uh, doing the same thing so in this scene I've just got a couple a um, uh, couple 3d coins and I want to make sure that the live actor is in the right place for for where I have my or my my coins are in the right place for the, the live actor so what I'm gonna do is hop over to the compositing tab on the effects panel and I can either hit control F7 or I can come over to Windows compositing options and we can always load an image in the background and we can composite things on top but we can also load images into the foreground now that means you're putting an image on top of everything and then it's gonna be blocking everything but we can go about uh, knocking out some of the elements. So what I'm going to do is head over to the image editor and I'm going to go ahead and load uh, an image and this is a, an actor on uh, top of green screen. This is from a, a hip-hop video and uh, this guy's going to be famous one day and uh, and right now it's just a still image but if I change image type from still to sequence I can actually scrub through the sequence and whenever I'm doing my renders with my um, frame slider if I let's go ahead and set this to say 180 frames and I'll be able to scrub through the frame slider uh, and we'll see it in the compositing tab so I'm gonna go ahead and close this head over to control F7 and for my foreground image I'm gonna pick the green screen footage and as I scrub through you can see we've got the multiple frames okay and let's go ahead and do a do a render I've got um, well before let's just see what it looks like before so do an F9 okay and here are our coins and now I want to place the actor in front so I'm gonna go ahead and do a a render F9 there we go. Okay, well, where are the coins? I can't see them. Now, if I had an alpha image, if I um, had a, a sequence of images that were the alpha, I could use the foreground alpha option and place it here, and it would be knocked out. So if I have that sequence, uh, I can go ahead and throw it in there. Uh, if I wanted to, we've got the, the foreground alpha, sorry, foreground fader alpha. What this is really good for is, say I loaded up a black image, I could... Um, with an envelope I could have my sequence fade fade to black or fade up from black and uh, do that right inside of Lightwave and that's a good use for the foreground fader alpha is to plug in a black image and uh, and then just have it dissolve in have have either the the, the footage dissolve in or uh, you know uh, go to you know fade to black uh, but what I can do with um, this green screen footage is I can do, I don't have an alpha for it, it's just shot on green screen. So what I can do is I can go to the foreground key and I, ca I can actually key out uh, a color range. Now, uh, it's not going to, um, it's not going to be like working in Digital Fusion or After Effects. You're not going to have as much control, but for lining stuff up, this is great. So I wouldn't use the foreground key option for final uh, compositing inside of Lightwave, but what I what I have used it for before is to line stuff up and be able to to do um, previs and, and animatics to make sure everything is going to look right. So all we have to do is um, pick a color range to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, left click and drag on my RGB values here and try and pick a, a color range that I think would uh, would work. So I'm just going to kind of get a, a, a darker green here and I'll get a lighter green here. So something yeah, something around here. Something around this range. Let's see. 
Okay, so a lighter green and a darker green. And let's do a render. Okay, so now I'm keying at the, out that color. I can see where the actor is um, and uh, and see if I'm lining up the stuff that I want. I want to make sure to say that the 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 type, the text on the, the coins is in play and, and I like where, where he's standing. Now, you'll see if we zoom in, we got some some pretty bad green edging going on there. Okay, well, I'm not worried about that because I know that I'm not going to be compositing this in Lightwave. I'm just using it for reference, but this is close enough if I needed to um, show it to the client and uh, get sign off. It's close enough that I could later then go and uh, take it into a compositing app. I just want to point out that as I scrub through, I don't have to continue to key out. Uh, it's already going to, it's using the same values. So I could do a render. Look at this guy. Man, he's going places. So um, if I just jump to another frame, it's going to work as well. So this is a great way for um, roughing out where you want to, um, you know, where you want to line up your 3D elements along with your uh, video footage. You can key out. You're not limited to keying out uh, green screen, uh, but you can key out c a color range, and uh, and it's either all or nothing. It's going to um, it's not really going to give you any kind of soft edges. You are going to have hard edges. So you, again, you wouldn't want to use this for final compositing, but you could use it to help kind of get you uh, where you need to be to then later take this off, take the foreground image off, do your renders, and know that it's going to line up exactly where you where you want it. So that's just a quick look at using uh, foreground images in the compositing tab. And remember that you can also just load in a black image and uh, do fade in and fade out with the foreground fader alpha.